So actually, if you walk into the road here. Actually, um, a bit. But the ground here actually gets warm uh, mm -hmm. because of the rocks, and that uh, actually radiates back up into the into the vines um, at nighttime, and continues to help the vines, uh, uh, you know, metabolize and form sugars and, and respire acidity. So here you can see we're not quite at flowering yet. Um, be pretty soon. Um, for all the vineyards here. Um, everything is came pruned, like in Burgundy. Um, there might be some spur pruning in the future. Uh, we're just kind of waiting to see how the vines grow. But um, as you can see, it's an extremely dense planting. Um, but the vines don't look like they're crowded at all. Uh, this is something that's really important for Pinot Noir. Um, Pinot is a, is a, you know, will produce its best wine when each plant is not required to carry that much fruit. Um, the way to really look at this is that if people tell you that their yields are two tons an acre, two tons an acre at 4,000 vines per acre, um, you know, means basically one pound per plant. But the standard planting in Santa Rita would be right around 2,000 vines per acre. So that's 1,800 usually. So then you're talking about doubling the yield per plant to get to the same yield as here. And that really is the big difference. Um, there are a lot of varieties that don't respond to that um, ratio uh, as dramatically. Like you can see that Cabernet Sauvignon is a, is a vine that, even when it's planted not densely, can produce extremely high quality grapes at three and a half, four tons an acre on loose spacing. But Pinot is very different. <coughs> Pinot really responds to this kind of high density situation. But it's amazing how different it feels here. I mean, it's just like you're in a totally different microclimate. So you 